Hey there, today I'm going to be talking about the Parker 51 2021 edition. And this is not the vintage pen, just so that nobody is confused. So I'm just going to be talking about the pen itself. Then I'll be giving my personal opinions on the pen. So why don't we just get started? Here's the box. And this is the box that I got the pen in. As you can see, this is the wrong box. But, you know, it doesn't matter. We, we only care about the pen, right? There we go. Here is the Parker 51. And I got this in a lovely burgundy color. There's a variety of colors you could choose from, from uh, for this pen. And uh, I'm sorry if the burgundy doesn't really show up. The, the lighting's kind of bad. But let's just get right into the pen itself. So this is a metal cap on plastic body pen. Let's just get right into the cap here. On the finial, you have this also metal piece of uh metal uh it looks kind of like the tip of a turboprop propeller which looks kind of nice this is very reminiscent of the vintage parker 51 so that's a nice homage to the og and then we have this clip here which is in a new style it's a bit longer like the tail of the arrow here is longer than the vintage clips it looks a bit more sleek, I suppose, but uh, no opinions on which one I like more. And the clip is very nice and very flexible. It's really a joy to use. It's not spring-loaded, but it's very nice and usable. Then you have this brushed finish on the cap here. It's a matte finish. Somewhat of a matte finish. It's not very reflective. And you have the cap band here, which just has Parker on it. It says in France and... The code right here, the production code, which you can use to check when your pen was made. And the body itself is just plastic, burgundy plastic of my pen. Uh, nothing to talk about there. And on the end finial here, just round it off more plastic. Then let's go ahead and take off the cap here. That's 50% of the weight of the pen gone. The rest of this pen is basically entirely plastic. So... Here is the section. Obviously, with a uh, inlaid nib like this, the section is going to be very long. You're going to have a lot of space here to put your fingers on. There is also a metal ring added on this section, which is not present on the Vintage 51s. For some reason, they added this. And as you can see, the threads are plastic, which is a slight problem. As you can see, there's already some chippings that uh, have come off. This is the result of metal rings metal threads and plastic threads then on the very tip here is obviously the nib as you can see the feed is partially exposed and the nib is there as well and look at that gap just look at that gap between the uh, pen body and the nib there that is not really what you would expect from a pen which is prized at this level and I'll talk about this a little bit more uh, in the actual opinion part of this video. But let's just go ahead and finish up the pen. You can twist this body off again. Metal threads on plastic threads. I wonder how that's going to pan out in 10 years. And here is the converter. The generic Parker converter with this slidey thing you use. And there's some bees inside. Not sure if you can hear that. There's a couple of beads inside here, as you can see, just, just one bead in here, to break the surface tension of the ink. And it does work, so I'll give him credit for that. And that is the entire pen covered. So, time for the opinion part of this. So, you can easily find this pen online for about 100 USD, give or take. And you will not necessarily get the burgundy version, but you will get this version with a steel nib but you can get a vintage parker 51 for less than that easily and you can get a 14 karat nib with that pen and you're going to have arguably better build quality right so i'm not sure how to justify that price tag on this pen and there's just more problems uh, with this pen for example the nib is a jotter nib. i'm not sure just now i show you guys the uh nib of this pen you can just kind of make out the shape of that nib it is a parker jotter nib and that pen 
is 15 yes $15 the nib from a $15 pen on a 100 plus dollar pen sounds kind of ridiculous to me but I will say um, despite the nib being cheap right it is very enjoyable to write with it is smooth and it is precise so I don't dislike the nib but just in pure terms of value for money I don't think it's worth it also this pen is easy to scratch on the section here I don't know if I can show you guys this but there are a lot of micro scratches on the section here from as I mentioned the metal cap right because when you cap this pen you don't always get it perfectly so sometimes the metal cap goes in touches the plastic scrapes it and goes on and that creates scratches so there's that this pen is easy to scratch the plastic body is also relatively easy to scratch and i've not had this pen for that long and the last thing i have to say which is negative about this pen is that it feels cheap the cap is fine but the body itself feels really cheap it's cheap plastic and it just doesn't weigh anything like i said if you take off the cap that's 50 percent of the weight of the pen gone the rest of it just feels like it barely exists in your hand and because of that this pen does not boast because when you post it it's way too back weighted by this huge chunk of metal it just doesn't really work out okay then let's talk about the pros of this pen for example like i mentioned even though the nib is cheap and is from a cheap pen i do like how it writes it's nice and smooth it's nice and precise it's enjoyable and uh I, I, I wouldn't say it's a bad nib. And I also think this pen looks very beautiful. It's in that burgundy color. Burgundy Parker 51s, in my humble opinion, are just great looking pens. And this pen looks really elegant and it looks really sleek. And that's where it ends for the positives. I really cannot think of anything else about this pen that's positive. Like I think, and this might get some people angry, but I think some Chinese manufacturers making fake knockoffs of vintage Parker 51s have done a better job at honoring the Parker 51 than Parker itself. I think those pens might just serve as a better homage to the vintage uh, the Parker 51 than this pen. That's just me though. Time for some size comparisons. As you can see, it's starting to rain. So I'm just going to do two pens because water is coming into my house. And so first, here we have the Lamy Safari. They are about the same length. But width-wise, the Lamy dominates the field. But obviously it does because this is a relatively sleek pen. And... I don't find that to be an issue though, because this pen is extremely comfortable to hold. I've never grown tired of writing with it. It doesn't tire my hand out, maybe because it's so light, but also due to its uh, relatively sleek width and perhaps length as well. And here is the second and last pen we shall be comparing. Here is the Parker IM. Let me just get it. There you go. It's about the same length. And it's almost the same width. So not a gigantic pen, obviously. And you would know if you had uh, any intention to buy this. Knowing how vintage Parker 51s are like. So, that is it. Uh, let's go ahead and do a writing sample. Okay, here we have the writing sample and excuse the fact that this paper has already been used. I was just using this for a test. But, you know, let's fully use the paper we have. So, here we have the Parker 51 2021 edition with a steel nib. And this is a fine. And it is indeed a fine nib. But this is a very smooth, fine nib. The ink we have e do shi zu ku ji and here's the sentence
Wow, beautiful. Anyway, very smooth rider, very nice rider, very comfortable rider, and is very nice and precise. Normally, my handwriting is not this ugly, I promise you. And in terms of line variation, well, it's a hooded nib, so what do you expect? You don't get anything, basically. There is a bit of uh, an increase in the ink flow, though, so it does look like it might be a bit wider. But that is not the case. It is not a flex or bouncing nib by any means. It's quite stiff. And wetness... It is actually not too wet. Um, this is just a very wet ink. As you know, Iro Shizuku is a wetter ink. But this pen actually writes slightly... I wouldn't say dry, but it's just medium. This is very adequate ink flow. And fast writing, there is no issue. After all, it is a jotter nib. So it's, it's going to be consistent. It's going to work well. It's just that this is a 15 dollar pen nib on a pen that costs what 100 bucks so you know what i actually like this pen personally i really do like this pen but that's my subjective opinion objectively i don't think this is such a great pen all right that's jesse pinkman signing out